All right. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. This is Anthony Smoke. As always, if you learned something, go ahead, hit that like button, leave a comment, and make sure you ring the bell so you get a notification when I drop a new video. Today, I am in Excel. I just recently spent a lot of time in Excel creating pivot tables and X lookups for hours on end to complete an analysis. Would I have liked to use a database and efficient SQL scripts? Yes, but that was not an option. But lucky for you, that experience inspired me to create this powerful lesson. So I'm calling this my rapid pivot table masterclass. I'm going to give you some free pivot table game here. Make sure you follow along. Okay, so when I create a pivot table, I like to do it from an actual table. So for all my Tableau heads out there, you'll recognize this data set as the sample superstore data set. I've modified it a little bit for some other lessons and videos I've done, but for the most part, this is Tableau uh, Superstore. So it doesn't matter which uh, data that you use here. We're just going to uh, turn this into a table. I'm gonna hit Control A, then I'm going to hit Control T, to turn this into a table. My table does have headers. I'm gonna say okay. And you get this data in a table format and there are a lot of advantages to having your data in a table format. But I'll get into that uh, some other time. So let's do this. Let's go to, well, first of all, let's give this table a name. I always like to give my tables a name. We'll call this Superstore. And there's no spaces in the table name, right? So. Um, just in case you were wondering. So let's do this. We'll go to insert pivot table from a table or range. And so you can type in superstore. That's my table or range. And we're going to put this on an existing worksheet, not a new worksheet. So I'm going to go over here to this worksheet and let's go ahead and put the, uh, um, the uh, select this cell, sorry, C4. I'm going to hit OK. And I got an option here uh, to create a pivot table. Okay, so you'll see that I have this pivot table uh, fields area that shows up. Let's do some setup. I'm going to select the uh, settings here. And what I like to do, I like this field section and area section side by side. So you get all these options. So I like this second option. It gives me more real estate to uh, look at my data fields or, or columns. And then I also like to go down here and change it from sort and data source order to sort to A to Z. That puts the columns in alphabetical order, making it easier to find. Okay, so within here, I'm gonna look for regions and drag that to columns, because I want those regions across the top. Let's look for subcategory and put that on rows. And then let's do a sum of profit on the values. So I can drag profit to values and it gives me a nice sum of profit here. If you ever need to change um, what the aggregation is, you can go to value fields uh, settings and select, you know, count, average, min, max, whatever you like. While I'm in here, let's do a number format and let's go to currency and I kind of like this red for the negatives. Let's make things pop. I don't want to see any decimal places. Let's say OK and OK again. And you'll see I get my data uh, in this, uh, this nice format. And let's go ahead and sort the grand total. I'm going to go to data. Let's go, let's go Z to A. So I get the, uh, the most profits at the top here. Now, let's go over here to column labels. And you'll notice that I can select um, one of my regions here. If I select, let's say I only want south and west for whatever reason, um, those columns remain south and west. And I can uh, get rid of that. That's how I can clear the filters. Let's just clear the filter. Everything shows back up. But you'll notice I can't apply a filter here across the top. You see how the filter up here is grayed out? There isn't an option. Excel doesn't let you apply a filter to these values. But if what if I want to do filter on the, you know, some of these uh, some of profits directly? What you can do, if I put my cell out here or select this cell, you'll see the filter shows up. But, you know, I get an error if I try to apply it here. And so there's a hack that lets you get around uh, applying a filter um, to these columns directly for these values. So we call this the magic cell. So you're going to put your 
cursor, you're going to select the cell essentially outside of the pivot range. You'll notice the filter uh, option is available. Let's select it. And magically, I get those, uh, those filter selections on each of these columns. I feel like this is a hack. This is something that for whatever reason, they have not cleaned up in Excel, but that's okay. We'll use it to our advantage. And I can go in here and I can select some things uh, directly. Let's say I don't want to see any negative uh, grand totals. I can clear that uh, off. And uh, you can also do like a um, number filter. So let's say greater than, I want my grand total greater than 10,000. Say okay. And I only have those subcategories where my profit's greater than 10,000. Now, one thing I will call out is that with this hack, the grand totals do not update, at least here on, on the bottom. These are not accurate. So if you're going to use this little hack here, make sure that you, you go into design, go to grand totals, and let's say on for rows only, and that'll disappear, and uh, you're left with this. So you don't want to... Uh, leave any misleading information there. But that is what we call the uh, the magic cell filter hack. And now you have that knowledge. Let's move on to the next pivot. Okay, so let's do some basic conditional formatting, uh, a top 10 filter and a percent of uh, total column here. So uh, we're going to make a new pivot. And what I can do, find my cell, I can go to insert pivot table from a table or range. And because we've named our table, I don't have to select anything. I can just type Superstore, and it knows what I mean in this existing worksheet. Say OK. And our pivot table fields area shows up. So I'm going to make a new pivot. Let's put the state up. First thing I like to do is let's go sort A to Z. There we go. So now let's go ahead and select our state. And we can put our, I'm also going to put category on rows. See how easy it is when it's in alphabetical order here. Let's do a uh, sum of sales column. We'll go sales here, sum of sales, and we'll put the region on filter. So I'll grab the region. Uh, let's drag that up to the filters. So this is our basic uh, setup. I'm going to right click on one of the values here and expand collapse and say collapse entire field. So all of this collapses at once and I don't have to do them individually. Now let's go ahead and sort our sum of sales. We can go here to data. Let's do Z to A. Oh, let's do, yeah, Z to A. <laughs> so we get Cali on top as our state with the greatest sum of sales. And so what I'm going to do is you can duplicate the column here because I want to show a percent of total column. So let's take sum of sales, take sales again and drag it over here. You see it's duplicated. Once I have that sum of sales to there, I can uh, go over here. I can right click and I'm going to say show values as percent of column total. And you'll see that changes to a percent. And there are a number of options there. Right, show values as you can choose from any of those options, but we chose percent of column totals. But let's go into for some of sales here, let's go into the value field settings and let's go ahead and change this number format. I like to make this uh, currency and let's go there, say okay. All right, so I get that formatted uh, nicely. And let me go back over here, value field settings. We can rename this. So this doesn't have to be sum of sales too. We can give it a more meaningful name. We can say sales percent of total and say, okay. And I get that nicely named uh, column there. Now, if I select the drop down here by row labels, you'll see I have this value filters option. And so I have all these options. And so let's do a top 10. So I want a top 10 items by sum of sales. That's fine. So I get rid of a number of states and I'm only focusing in on those states that matter to me. Okay, let's apply some uh, conditional formatting here. I'll go to home and this is only going to apply to my, my top 10, but I can select these uh, values here on the sum of sales. 
go to conditional formatting and under icon sets, right? And you can do data bars, color scales. Under icon sets, I can select uh, these shapes here, these indicators for the uh, Vexilla files out there. There are some flags, but let's go ahead and just do our uh, traffic lights and you'll see it applies that, uh, that formatting here. Now note that that conditional formatting only takes place at the top level here. So even though I have categories under the states, it's only applying to the, uh, the state there. So note that. And also note that my region filter will take precedence over the top 10. So if I select something like central, you'll note that only these three states, because they were part of the top 10, got that conditional formatting. Right now, if I remove our top 10 value filter, I can just say clear filter from state. You'll see that additional states showed up here at the bottom that I did not have before. Okay, so in this next pivot table, I'm going to teach you a number of uh, tips and tricks here, but the main one is how you get data bars in a different uh, column in a cleaner fashion, a cleaner visual. So let's go ahead and do this. I set up a pivot table already, and I'm gonna put state and city on the rows. So we'll find our state. Let's select state. Let's select our city, and that goes into rows, good. And we're going to put the, the sum of profit twice here. So I'm gonna go profit, and I'm gonna drag it in here the second time. So I have it uh, twice. And you remember our trick here, we're gonna expand collapse entire field so I don't have to do all of that individually. Let's go ahead and tidy up the, uh, the first sum of profits here. Let's go to value field settings, number format, and we like our accounting. So let's go, oops, sorry, currency. So let's make those uh, zero and say okay here. And OK again. And we're going to go to data and make that Z to A. So I get those sum of profits at the top. And now I have some negatives down at the bottom here. Now watch this. This is what you came for here. So sum of profit to, let's go ahead and do value field settings. And I'm going to call this profit data bar. Profit data bar. And I want to go into the, uh, the number format, say custom, and then I'm going to type in here, let's get rid of general, I'm going to type in three semicolons, and then I'm going to say OK, say OK, and you'll notice uh, the values disappear. But that's OK, because what I'm going to do is highlight all of these. And we'll do our, uh, go back to home here, conditional formatting. We'll go to our data bars and we'll make this uh, a nice little gradient fill. And you'll see I get those data bars in a separate column, right? That's a nice little trick here. Okay, so now we're gonna create some custom groups. So let's say I highlight all of my profitable states here. And what I can do uh, under my options, you'll see there's group selection. And so with the group selection, uh, I can group those and you'll see group one shows up here. Let's go ahead and collapse that up and I have all my unprofitables here and we'll group these selections and that becomes group two. So you'll see uh, I have these, uh, these two group values here. And so what I can do, so let's name one of these profitable and another one of these unprofitable. So I'm just gonna type profitable, and this is going to be unprofitable. So I have these custom, custom groups uh, as you see here, and I can select on this. This will show up as state two here because it's based off of the state. And you know we can go in here to our, um, our field settings and let's just call this profit status. Profit status. Oops. And say OK. And it shows up as profit status here. Otherwise, it would stay as uh, state two. So use grouping 
as well uh, for your for your values. Now, let's say I need to reorder some of the data in uh, my pivots. It doesn't just have to be groups. I could take that and I can just drag it up top. You see that? I've got the unprofitable up top, but let's say I want to uh, switch it back down. I could, you know, I could move this back up here. There's two ways you could do that. Or down here in unprofitable, if I just type profitable and hit enter, that will show up there and unprofitable goes to the top. So you can literally just go in here and, and type another value and it will switch the order as well. Now I can also reorder values just by cutting and pasting. So I'm gonna control C, go up here, hit control V, and you'll see my profitable and unprofitable switch places. I'll do it again, come up here, hit control V, and I can switch places in this matter. And obviously, like I said before, you can also drag things. So that's one way to reorder your values. Now the great thing about pivot tables is that if I need to see the value for any of my, uh, you know, some sums of profit. Sorry, if I need to see the detail for any value here. So let's say I'm in Georgia, right? I can expand Georgia here and see the cities. We got, uh, you know, East Point, uh, Decatur, College Park, you know, worldwide. Uh, you know, I got to drop the outcast reference there. But let's say I want to see, hey, show me what's going on in Atlanta. I can double click. I can do one of two things. If I double click on the value, guess what? I get all that underlying detail for Atlanta, right? So these are the rows that just apply to Atlanta. You can see in the city here, that's the only option. So I could delete that. But again, yep, Excel will delete that. Again, you could select on any value you want and get that underlying detail. Or right click on the actual value and show details. It does the same thing. So this is all Atlanta again. So that is a cool little trick there to see all of the details for a specific value. Okay, let's show you some, uh, some tricks with the design report uh, layout here. So actually I'm gonna keep uh, profitable uh, expanded. And if I go in here to design and report layout, if I say show in outline form, you'll see that state kind of moves out into another row. So I may want to keep, you know, I may want that here to make it easy, easier to filter, or is it's a little harder to do when it's underneath the profit status there. So if I select California, right, the cities will show there. Again, back to Georgia those cities will show in a different uh, column. So that's an option that you can, uh, you can select if you like that format. Again, it's um, show in outline form, and then this is the traditional show in compact form. Now let's talk about referencing the data in our pivot uh, with the get pivot data versus standard cell referencing here. So let's say you wanted to, let's say, um, you know, add up the values of California uh, plus Michigan, right? So I'll say this value plus, and we'll go down here to uh, Michigan. And you'll notice I get this in get pivot data format. There's a lot going on here that I'm not going to get into, but it does give me the uh, correct uh, value here. I'm going to alt uh, H A N, right? Shortcuts, showing off my shortcuts here. So anyway, it does give me the value here. And if I expand California, it still gives me the correct value. So what I can do, if you don't like that get pivot data format or referencing, you can turn it off, right? So if I go up to, let's click in here. And if I go to pivot table, analyze in the options, see, it's, see how it says generate get pivot data? I could turn that off. And so now... If I were to expand, or sorry, unexpand that, I have a reference error because it, you know, the cells that it's referring to don't exist, and when it comes back, it's it's there. So what you can do, uh, what we've done by turning off get pivot data now, if I say California, see how it gives me just the D six plus D nine, it gives me that value. But again, when I change. <laughs> it's giving me the wrong value. It's referring to, if we look D6 plus D9, it's like, okay, well, I'll give you a D6. I got nothing in D9. So just know that there are 
uh, drawbacks to using this format, but it can be useful if you don't want to use that get pivot data um, referencing. Okay, this is a neat little trick. Let's talk about show report filter pages. So let's go ahead and get back into our uh, pivot table fields here. I'm going to take the profit status and I'm going to put that on filters here. So we end up uh, with with something uh, like this. I've taken away the groups essentially from here. But let's say I need my profitable and unprofitable in separate tabs. So whatever you put up here in the filters, you have the option of going to, let's go to pivot table, analyze, and in options, I could say show report filter pages. And it's based upon the profit status because that is in the filters. I'm going to say OK. And what that does is, you look down here at the bottom, it puts those filtered values, right, profitable and unprofitable, in their own worksheet. So, you know, I could have done the same thing with regions and it would have given me, you know, four different uh, worksheets. But that's a neat little trick here just to separate out uh, all of our, our different uh, filtered values into different worksheets in case you have to send them off to, uh, to different people. Okay, in this last section, we're going to deal with dates, calculated fields, and timelines. This is an important section, so stick around for this. I'm going to create a new pivot, and first thing I like to do when I create a new pivot here, we're going to go, I'm going to sort A to Z to get those in alphabetical order. Let's go ahead and put the ship mode. I'm going to select ship mode. And I'm going to put those on rows. That's fine. And let's also put the order date. All right, let's select the order date. And we'll put that on rows. Now, notice what happened here when I put in order date. You'll see it put in years, quarters, months, and the actual order date. So if I were to break this down, you'll see I get that year, that quarter, um, the month, and then the actual dates are here. And so sometimes when you put a date in there, let's say order date is missing. And so when you break it down, go down to the hierarchy, you're like, oh, what? I can't go down any further. What happened? And so all of that is in kind of the group selection. So when you're in pivot table analyze, and let's say you don't have a value here, you can go in a group selection and you can change when you want to start your, your dates at. So you don't have to start at, um, you know, 2016. I could change this, but, you know, I'm just going to throw in, let's say, you know, days. Let's throw days back in here. And so now you'll see that it puts days here where that was previously uh, missing. Or if I, if I take quarters out and I really want that, go to group selection and then you can select, oh, if I select quarter again, that should put it back. You'll see it put it back. So anyway, if you're ever missing a value here, just go ahead and hit group selection uh, on your dates and then select the dates uh, that you want. Now let's insert a, uh, a calculated field here. So I'm going to collapse uh, all of this. Now I could, now what I should do is something like this, expand, collapse, uh, collapse entire field to get everything to collapse all at once. So let's go ahead and put a um, uh, sum of sales and let's put that on uh, values here. So I'll go sum of sales, make sure that's the uh, sum of values. Again, uh, you know, whenever you need to format something, I like to go to the value field settings and then do that uh, in here. So we'll change this to currency. Right, you know how we've done throughout the whole video. Say okay, there we have that format. So now let's say I wanted to add a calculated field. Right, we need to produce some some more spacely sprockets here, and I want a um, a next year sales target. So on pivot table analyze, in here, I can select fields. So if I look for fields in here, whoops, fields, items, and sets, I should say. See this calculated field uh, option? We're gonna do that. And I can give this a name. I could say next, whoops, caps lock on here, <laughs> next year sales. And so it becomes, so what is the formula for next year sales? I can say, here, I can just go down here and look for sales. And this is not in alphabetical, but I could insert that field. So sales what? Let's say sales times 
1.1. And I can add that. And I have a next year sales, say okay here. I have a next year, sum of next year sales that shows up that it's 10% higher. So I have the sum of sales and then this is 10% higher. Now let's say I wanted to delete my calculated field. I can go over here to field sets, field items and sets, calculated field, go down to, actually I can just select the drop down next year sales, right? And I could select delete. I'm not gonna do it, but that is how you delete your calculated field. Okay, so let's talk about filtering dates, which can be a little frustrating. So, you know, I can use a slicer or a timeline in order to do that. So if I were to put, let's say, let me show you the, uh, the frustrating way. So if I take the order date, which is already here, if I take the order date and put that on the filters, it takes it away. First of all, it takes it away from the main pivot area. I don't get that, uh, that showing up here in the pivot and look at this, I have to I have to filter like like this, which is annoying if I just wanted to, uh, you know, I could put the year in here, but I'd have the same problem. It would take it away from the actual information breakdown that I see here in the pivot. So that's kind of the annoying way. Let's say I wanted to add a slicer to my data here to filter my data. I can go up to pivot table, analyze, insert slicer. And I want to slice on my years here and you'll get something like this. And I like to go to the slicer settings and let's hide items with no data. Say, okay. Now, if I expand this, you'll see I have all the years, but if I just select 2016, 2017, if I want to multi-select, I could select this and that'll let me select uh, specific years that I want. And you'll see those years show up and disappear. Uh, as I select the different value. Okay, last but not least, you made it this far. I think this is really useful here. I'm gonna show you about the insert timeline, which can be really useful. So let's go ahead, you know, we're gonna select insert timeline, and we want that based upon our, let's say order date, say okay. And so what the timeline does, let's say I needed to filter by, you know, some some odd days here. So what you can do, uh, let's say I need to filter by uh, January of 2018 to April 15th of 2019. Instead of selecting individual days, what I could do here is say, you know what, for years, let's go up to years. I know I need to zero in on 2018 and 2019. So you see that filters there, but I can keep zeroing in. Again, I said I needed January 2018 to April of April 15th of 2019. So I know I'm going to go into 2019, April. So I need to go into Q2 for my quarters. And if I look in 2019, I've got Q2, April. Now I need to get down to April uh, 15th only. So let's go into days right? We're, we're just zeroing in on the days that we want here now. So now I could back these all the way up. As you can see, I zeroed in here on April 15th. So now I'm January 1st, 2018 to April 14th. Oh, let's back that up one to April 15th. So this is a way this timeline lets you zero in on specific days here. It just makes it easier to filter by, again, by any of our cuts in the hierarchy, years, quarters, months, and days. So use the timeline to filter if you have a lot of dates in your pivot tables. All right, so you made it to the end and I appreciate you watching the video. So do me this favor. If you made it this far in the video, I want you to leave a graduation cap emoji in the comments. That just lets me know like, hey, I'm one of those few people that made it all the way through the, uh, the video. I will give you a shout out in the comments. So just leave a graduation cap emoji in the comments to let me know that you watched the whole video. So this has been Anthony Smoke. Uh, I've given you a pivot table masterclass here. So again, refer back to this video, share it with others. You know, this is the one pivot table video that you need to watch uh, to get up to par 
with Pivot Table. So this has been Anthony Smoke. Appreciate you watching. Um, make sure to like and subscribe. Get out there and do some great things with your data. Stay data driven. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs>